What is good? Bye bye. <laughs> bye pod. Down from the tripod. We had a little big co. Dropped him out of here. He doesn't want to talk about rookies. Mm-mm. He's not down for the rookie report. <laughs> he uh, he won't take my advice on rookies. So <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> he doesn't give a shit about your rookies. He'll trade that pick. Don't get trade raped by big co. Mm. It usually doesn't work out for him, though, because he has bad fantasy coins. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, appreciate y'all joining us. If you haven't uh, hit up thrivefantasy.com, you need to do that. Go ahead and hit that up. Use the promo code THEFFD in all caps. You can get a full match bonus. And uh, D. go ahead and check that out. It's a really cool app. It's basically like a tournament or non. You don't have to play in the tournament. Why wouldn't you? Uh, but you can tournament style prop betting competition where, you know, they'll set, you know, 23 completions for Josh Allen or and one uh, of our patrons over at uh, the FF Dynasty or Patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty brought up a great point about looking at those props mm-hmm. as like a way to gauge. Yeah, we used to do that on the stars. show. Did we? Yeah, a while ago. I mean, I never been looking at props. I'm not a degenerate we, gambler. We used but. to. We didn't. <laughs> we didn't necessarily look at the props for every player, but we looked at the lines and the over unders. Well, and all sure, those that, and total points. That's a right. great way to do it. But like, for instance, uh, last week they had. I think Trey Sermon was had an over under of like half the yards of what Elijah Mitchell had. So if you weren't sure who you should start, like Vegas was basically telling you to start Elijah Mitchell. And right. I never, I never thought about that. And a Patreon patron brought it up in the uh, Discord channel. Yeah, and I was like, ah, very smart. Light bulbs, smart. I like it. So, uh, if you're watching us on the YouTubes, please hit that subby, scribey. However, you need to do it. Hit that noty. <laughs> Leave a commie. No, nah, I can't. No commies. Can't, can't shorten comment to commie. That's Mm-mm. that was a bust. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely a bust. <laughs> hey, you win some, you lose some. You know, the ball don't lie. <laughs> Communism isn't cool, man. It's all about freedom over here, bro. You know what fantasy communism is? Making you start three wide receivers. Agreed. Agreed. Get that shit. Let me get line up freedom. Line up freedom. Why can't I start four? Well, running backs? you know, there's there's so many good wide receivers. I don't know why you wouldn't make it mandatory to start three wide receivers. Why can't I start four running backs? Why can't That's I start the problem. whoever the hell I want to start? Right. Well, you need to start two and two. I get that. You know, sure. there are rules. Rules right. are rules. There's limitations and boundaries, but you just you stretch it too far. Let me start four running backs, or just give me the option. If I want to start four wide receivers, I'll start four wide receivers. I well, could the draft. second flex. Give me, give minus me minus the, the third wide receiver. Right, is that's, exactly. That's that. what I'm saying. Give me the options. Ugh. It's ridiculous. It's don't terrible. don't set these hard fast. Give me give me options on the lineup setting, and then if you want to if you want to make it like something silly like got to start two tight ends, fine. Throw that on there too. Uh, just but be quirky. If you know super flex with. With the optional, uh, you know, double flex outside the super flex, love it. Don't 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 make me start. Don't give me a positional. Give me two two, and then the freedom. Exactly. One on, one on the tight end. I'm with you. I'm with you. The rookie recap. <sighs> We're doing it. What we've all been waiting for. Got to keep track of these rookie. Hold on, I got to cut it back to the main. Got to cut it back to the main <laughs> angle. To Felt like the, with that sound effect, that should be to get the hair flow flowing the hair around. It again. Mm. <laughs> we need a fan blowing directly this way, but it causes too much ambient noise. Yeah, nobody gives a fuck. Nope. But they All do right. care about the rookies. Love the rookies. Let's get into the rookie report. What do we got here? Khalil Herbert, right off the rip, hasn't Ooh. made this list. People tuned out. Out of nowhere, <laughs> shouldn't have led with Khalil Herbert. Mm-mm. He had a bomb game. Bottom man. of the end, bottom of the report card. Kind you of could guy. have, you could have highlighted that, and <laughs> you could have cut it and pasted it. I could have. Well, Command X, Command Command V, for no. those that Herbert looked. Um, use Max. Herbert looked uh, like he had a little spring in his step, a little little giddy up to him. I, I liked what I saw from Herbert there. Nothing to get too, too excited about because we all know Montgomery's the man there. Mm. Um, but and out, Williams looked pretty good, too. Out his... for a couple games, but, you know, did did like what you saw from Herbert there, and they gave him a decent amount of run 
probably going to see a pretty conservative game plan with them moving forward unless they get down big, which with the defense, I don't know if they will on too many teams. Not very many throwing attempts from Justin Fields or rushing attempts, man. I think he had like three attempts for four yards or something. Yeah. Like, what are they doing? Like, why don't you call that, dial that shit up a bit? But he you no know, interceptions, didn't turn it over, managed the game. They ran it, played defense, and got the dub. I mean, Gruden was still coaching the Raiders during that game. Right. But they seemed out of sorts. Like, they were dropping balls. They had penalties. Well, they didn't have it together. They didn't look like a 3-1 team, and they mm-hmm. got beat pretty good. Oh, it was 20-9. But by, when you lose to the Bears, it's... Yeah, I mean, they, the Bears aren't... It's, it's not going to be a big a big differential. They're going to grind it out with you and, and play some defense. And, and, you know, Herbert gives you another thing to defend. And like I said, they're going to play it pretty close to the vest. Conservative, now they got Herbert and Williams to uh, to hit you with there. So... Uh, both look pretty good, but nice, nice little uh, game for Herbert there on on his first uh, real NFL usage here. So I liked liked what you saw there. I did manage to scoop him up in a league uh, for pretty cheap. So maybe the maybe the Montgomery owner will give me a third for him. I think I picked him up on the waivers. You That's know, probably what you paid for. Him. Well, I guess know. not. Not if you got him off waivers. Picked him up off waivers. I like that. All right, another rookie that no one cares about. Kylan Granson. Whew. Really leading off with the with the heavy hitters. Hitting them here, with the huh? bangers. Boom, boom. <laughs> I'm not following broadcasting one on one where you gotta Mm-mm. you gotta hit them, hit them with the hops and then go down smooth. Yeah, you gotta you gotta throw <laughs> Jamar Chase and Najee up there first. Oh, we'll get through it real quick. Anyway, Kylan Granson, he was a guy that we all were targeting towards the last round of, of any league, uh tight end premium, especially. He's a tight end for the Colts, if you guys didn't know. And, uh, you know, we all know Frank Reich has been searching for that tight end puzzle piece. And they've got, you know, Mo Alley Cox is kind of showing out and Doyle's there. Doyle's there shoving dudes' heads into the ground. Oh, yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, but Kylan Granson had a couple of catches. That's it. Yeah, he's, had a couple he's of catches. Making an appearance and, and, you know, getting out on the field, getting some runs. So cheap positive signs up. for a cheap scoop up to begin with and, and still cheap. All right, someone everyone cares about, Rondale Moore. I saw that PFF only had uh, Jamar Chase, I think, graded higher than him, maybe. Or maybe he was the highest graded rookie receiver so far. Something along those lines. So All these high praise are balling out. High praise. It's the, the opposite because the rookie quarterbacks are, are playing like ass. And the rookie, they, the rookies, for the most part, the rookie skill position players have been Wilding. hot fantasy fire. Yeah. <sighs> Andrew Luck trying to breathe fire is, <laughs> or just breathing. <sighs> That's just Andrew Luck breathing. Oh, I really Sounds like what I've seen from that Rondale. <sighs> oh, what I like to throw to a guy like that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I would too. <laughs> Looking at this stat line and watching the game, they don't match up. Right. Five for six for 59 yards, three carries for 38 yards. That doesn't look like a ton, but man, you watch that game incredible 33 yard catch. I mean, that's just one of the finest catches you can make in a game. Like that's not what he's known for. He's not known for the gracefulness on the sideline. He's known for the. Yeah. Yeah. More of a Debo style guy, right? which he's fucking doing that too. Yeah. And yeah. should have had a touchdown. How that wasn't a touchdown. Yeah. How was that? Not a, t- that was some bogus. That was a bogus call. That's bogus, man. Big time. Bogus. Uh, but man, gotta be loving what you see from Rondell. Yeah, Rondell's gotta be a trade target for you because it hasn't like blown, blown up. And if you're not paying attention, paying attention, still seeing, like you said, better game better on game. the field than what the game log represents here. Um, and and just really interesting. Might be probably purgatory for most of this year, and then who knows what really will happen. But I think he'll eventually command a lot of volume in this offense. Yeah, I mean, it's clear that they, they have him lining up in the backfield. Now, some of that could have been because Chase Emmons was a little dinged up. So, they, they, But this is like the first time that, that I saw them get a concerted back, effort to yeah. give him rushing attempts and stuff, and, and then they're still manufacturing short yardage. But you see what Cliff Kingsbury wants to do with all these wide receivers. And for him to be so young and just starting off in his rookie season and getting this much opportunity in this crowded, muddy-up lineup, yeah, I mean, you can pretty much forget about like Andy Isabella. He just put him in the body bag. Like, right, you can, he's not even getting playing. He's, I think, a healthy scratch. Like, they got Kirk and and Green yeah. and Nuke and and, but they can't keep Rondale Moore from t- 
touching the ball. They have to give him the ball because right. he's so good. And and it's it's not equating to monster games, which is why you can still get in at a cheaper price. Because oh my, oh my god. Yeah, I think I think the Bills oh have some god. crazy point differential that's insane right now. But the the Cardinals are second on like a normal <laughs> point differential. Like a normal amount of points. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I got Trey Lance on here. We did a vi- we did a, a, a little segment on him uh, earlier. Fifteen for twenty nine, hundred ninety two yards, one interception, sixteen rushes for eighty nine yards. Made his fantasy day. Uh, nothing, go, nothing sexy there for for Trey. Just good to see him out there, get a start. Did get a little banged up, so you know, regardless of whether or not they were going to play Jimmy or not. You rush it sixteen times. What do you think's going to happen? I don't love it. Um, and it's like not like he's sliding. Game plan. Not, a, not a single slide. I don't think I saw a single I, slide. I, I, w- I want to see him in manufactured runs, but I want to see him in the offense. And then because there's such a big spot on the field, he's got to take that lane and run with it because the offense is operating at a you know a high efficiency like they have in the past. And I think that's what you need to get to instead of just all the design runs where he's grinding some of those runs out instead of right. having wide open space because right. the offense is, is running so smooth. But that'll come in time. Because I don't think, I think they kept it pretty basic in vanilla. I just don't love all the attempts. Wish they would have got the run game involved a little more. With a running back. With a running back, yeah. Elijah Mitchell. Right. Uh, which he's a strong trade target, right? Ah, Elijah's look great every time he touches a ball. I can just, they can't say his name too many times Mm-mm. in this show. No. Uh, but Trey Lance looked erratic at times, made some good throws, some bad drops, made some bad throws, clearly overthrowing guys, throwing balls behind guys, like, and it takes a while, man. Not everybody can just be Russell Wilson and have the great feel for when to take off. You know, yeah. These well, young guys, like that's a crutch. It's like a, it's like a, it's a crutch. Right. And Russell came in basically knowing that he was going to be the number. Well, they had a, they had Matt Flynn, but he knew before the season, before the preseason was over, that he was going to be the guy. And then he was also afforded the luxury of a, which should be the 49ers, of a great, an all time defense with. Uh, the, the Seahawks and, and then a, you know a, a really good run game with Marshawn, right? Um, right. So which yeah, he, all of those things could be the 49ers. So it's a nice deal for a rookie quarterback. Just Jimmy is going to give the team currently the best shot to win, I believe. And you don't want no reason for your rookie quarterback to come in there and take lumps. He can learn. He's going to still get on the field at times. You could get build some packages with him, but. Um, Russell was just so much more polished too coming out. I mean, he was playing in big time games well, in Wisconsin and, he, yeah, played, and, and NC State. And you then know. Trans- grad transferred and got another year, and it's right. just a different animal. And and Trey Lance didn't even play in 2020. Right, he played one game, one season really before that and even. Then one se- so. Right, so I mean, you can't expect and he that ran much the from Trey. Wing T offense in right. high school, so you know, lot lot rawer uh, talent there. All right, let's take it to another guy. Amon Ra St. Brown. He's just an empty compiler. Yeah. He's an empty compiler. Some douchebag on Road World. Ooh, he- wrote, em- heavy emphasis on the D there. Love it. Oh, I feel like there's no more words I can really use. So douchebag is going to be my go-to. How thing. could that be offensive? I don't know. I'm sure Feminine at some point hygiene. we're going to lose it, but I don't know. I guess. Damn. Should I, think, I apologize? To, I think you're fine. I forgot that it's like a term of. <laughs> Bitch, I'm a D bag. It's just not a. It's not just a negative. <laughs> negative. Whatever. All those words slander. are taken on a, a word, a meaning of their own. Right. They, they don't mean what the definition may Sorry be. Sorry so. if you're offended. I said douchebag. Uh, I still. I stand by it. He I stands mean by it. it. I mean it. Why are you gonna say some shit like that? You could, this is the same guy who probably hated Jarvis Landry. They didn't fit the analytical profile, so he's an empty compiler. He's an outlier because he's catching balls. Or I, I don't even fucking know if anyone's good that an analytical person didn't like. They're an outlier. Right. Well, you know, I, I'm not saying Amara is good, but he's on his way to being pretty dang good. I think there's a new favorite target emerging for, for Jared Goff here. Defenses are kind of honing in on TJ Hawk. Hawkinson, and he's he's uh, even said that publicly. Like, hey, they're they're really keying on me. They're kind of locking me up and, and you know, kind of bracket covering me. And Jared's got to look elsewhere to, to find production. And, and Amon Ross St. Brown has been to the, the team leader last two of the last two weeks in targets eight and eight and just you know had another seven for eight this week 65 and 
you can call it empty compiling all you fucking want, but I mean, at the end of the day, he's had two back to back pretty good games, and Jared's been he's been looking for Jared, and Jared's been looking for him on the scramble drill. They seem to be kind of building a little rapport there. Jared's looked for him in a couple of big spots in that Bears game, the third down, and then the fourth down again, which he got open on. Just Jared was getting pressure on him. I mean, Jared just missed him on a long pass in that game. So I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown is 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 coming around and, and is looking to be a good player. It, and then who the hell else do they have on this offense, which is why, right. you know, he was that mid second that, that I, I just had to have because, you know, Jared's, yeah, Jared's not necessarily playing bad. This team is playing their ass off every time you they're see anybody out there. They're in every fucking game. You can keep playing the stupid soundbite about Dan Campbell biting kneecaps and, and keep making jokes about that because you're the most unoriginal person ever. Uh, but Dan Campbell's got them boys out there wanting to play, wanting to go for it. And, you know, a little emotional after this last game. Uh, but, you know, the, the guys, I think, are going to like that. And, and the, the, like I said, they've, they've, they've been right there in every single game. And, and this was a team that, you know, nobody thought would be in, in any game, I don't think. And, you know, Jared's playing half decent. And, and, and St. Brown, is, is seems like he could be a big part of this offense moving forward. They have uh, capital moving forward to kind of shift this thing. They should have a good offensive line. Core and, there. They did right. lose Ragnall for the year, so that's a huge bummer. It is but. a big bummer, but I love what I'm seeing from St. Brown right here over the last two games, and I know everybody just wants the fucking best players that you can possibly get. Everybody on my team has to score 30 points, but like if once you get past it, into a team where you're flexing more than one flex week after week, you need fucking 12 point a game 15 point a game guys who and if they score a touchdown they get you 20 and st brown looks like he could be that guy week in week out and this is this is this is just a a rookie who wasn't all that highly thought of a second round pick in in most fantasy drafts um and you know i i thought he looked good in the preseason and he looks like a little target hog uh, he right separates. here, and he yeah, separates. One point nine six yards of separate target separation. That's good for seventeenth in the league. Does uh, that counteract the seven point four yards of a dot that everyone? I don't know the empty so compiling. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? You're I don't, just a hater. I don't You're know just a fucking hater. If you're gonna be like, oh, that's empty compiling. Yeah, I sound so fucking. Smart. How is it any different I than what so Hunter? Smart. What Hunter Renfro is doing? But they love Hunter Renfro. Right. Hate uh, Jarvis Landry. Hey, Amon Ross St. Brown. Because he's just saying that it just it, it happened in times where it didn't matter. I mean, but that's not the case in the Bears game last week. I mean, I didn't watch every target this week for, for St. Brown. but I, I mean, mean but that was a close game. It's not like there was just garbage time they, compiling. They, they came back. But, yeah, no. Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, fuck that. Um, St. Brown. Just a dickheaded shot, and I wanted to take my own dickheaded shot. Yeah, the fuck rider of that Hey, blurb. this is fantasy. Let's have some fun. Talk your shit. Yeah. Have some fun. Don't get too serious about it, and, and fuck what you heard. That's a stupid fucking co- quote and comment from some cork soaker writer. <laughs> fuck what you heard. All right, let's take it to another rookie. Uh, let's see, Javante Williams. I don't know if we need to bring up every guy on this list. Real quick, Javante Just another steady eight rushes for 61 yards, three catches for 25 yards, just doing everything with what opportunity he's given. And Melvin's playing fucking good. Melvin's playing great. He did pop on the injury report. So there's like a little bit of, okay, can we get a little worse injury on that? I don't want to hurt. I don't want to hope for an injury on Melvin Melvin looks good, and he doesn't look like he's going to fall off a cliff next year either. Like he looks, I don't know if he's there. Um, So that's what, that's what, I think he's on a two-year deal, and this is the second year of his deal. So, um, I think he's out of there, and this will be Javante's backfield. But Javante's a good, like, buy right now, regardless yeah. of your team. Melvin's out of there next year. Uh, but this is just, if no one's watching the game and doesn't see how good he's like, I said it last week, I'm going to say it again. Like, if they're not watching the games, which you should be watching the games, or at least at least whatever's on in your local area. I don't expect you to watch every game on Game Pass like I'm trying to do every week so I can come correct on this show. But, like, if you're not seeing what Javante Williams is doing and you have him on your team and you're like, ah, oh, he's only getting me eight, nine on 10 points. I can't start him and he's not. They're still giving it to Melvin, so he must suck. Like, just go pounce on that guy because he's Yeah, good. well, we talked about it earlier. If you if you didn't listen to the whole podcast or listen to the other video, he's a good guy uh, who can be a trade target to get off of somebody's team on maybe a little bit higher end older asset that you're trying to move off of because you're not – really ready to win right now and like you said i think for all those reasons if you're not watching javante 
he's really good and he's not necessarily in somebody's starting lineup right now. So you could trade some, for somebody who could be in their starting lineup because maybe they're hurting for that second flex or a second RB and you could grab Javante Williams for maybe a little older aging out player um, and, and go ahead and get yourself a nice little Javante Williams piece. So I like that. Love it. All right. Devonte Smith, Devonta Smith, Still crushing seven for eight for 77 yards, added a two-point conversion. Slim Just Reaper, incredible. baby. Just Slim incredible. Reaper. Just wanted to give him a shout-out. I uh, think he got a TD call back again this week, possibly. He did hit that two-pointer, so that's like a little half, that's half a TD in PPR. I like that. Uh, let's see here. Chuba. Chuba! 24 carries, 101 yards, five receptions for 33 yards. What would you see out of Chuba? I, like I said, when... I wasn't on here last week, but the week before, Chuba looked like in the beginning of that game that he was he, at the end of that when he came in for CMC was kind of, you know, running into his blockers, running up on the backside of guys, and then see, seemed to kind of figure it out a little bit near the back half of that game. And then this last game, he looked pretty damn good. Um, now the Eagles are missing a couple of parts and pieces there, but I loved everything I saw from Chuba Hubbard in this last game. I mean, it speaks for itself, 24 for 101 five receptions he he had maybe one drop in there but he had a couple of okay snags and the speed and agility and even even some bursts and, and playing through contact look really good um and really at the end of the day guys like chuba hubbard are the reason that i love dynasty fantasy football because this was a guy who we were high on we liked we went back and watched all the tape we watched all the tape before everybody loved him the year before if he would have came out and then uh you know he just sucks now because this that and the third and he wasn't any good and there's no way that he could be good and you know screw Ch chuba hubbard and it's like no nah, i'm gonna stick with this guy i went and did my due diligence i did my work guys like chuba guys like kylan hill who you can see popping on the field aren't, aren't maybe Kylan's not getting his chance right now but those those type of guys where you watched them all through their career you decided that hey I think this guy's good and then you go ahead and you spend that second round pick a little higher than maybe some people wanted you to whether you had CMC if you had CMC you had to get him and if you did well maybe you weren't in love with him like we were but ah but to see what Mike Davis did in that role right you had to get him. And no I, choice. I thought right Chuba was great. He's more than just a one-trick pony of a speed guy, and I think he's showing you that right here. Definitely. Um, and, and can grind out a game. And Royce Freeman, who? Um, so, hey, yeah, he's doing okay. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not hating on, on, on Royce, but the, the, the Chuba anything. haters would have easily told you that. Oh, well, Royce Freeman's just as good. Right. And, ah, you know, ah, ah, ah. I love this. I love the fact that. You know, we we stayed pretty pretty on Chuba, and for him to get his opportunity with a full game here, um, and 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 have you know, maybe he'll have another game this week. He had he had a game last week where he was he was playing pretty well with Dal against Dallas, but then that game kind of got a little out of hand, so you didn't quite get to see what you saw here, where this was a tight game and they were leading, and and you know he was doing everything he could to to try to put that game away. A couple of mistakes from Sam Darnold, and uh, and the Eagles just just came back and capitalized. Uh, but but love Chuba Hubbard, love the the second round pick, love the the handcuffs. Maybe you know top three or four handcuffs uh, available right now for uh, the big time guys. So fuck yeah, Chuba Hubbard. Like you said, this is what makes Dynasty fun. When you like a guy coming out of college, and for whatever reason the narrative gets flipped on him, and you just stick with him, and then he pays you off. It's just fabulous. We're going to get to a guy like that here in a minute. But let's keep moving. Highlight the, the strong players from this week, which they just keep crushing it. Jamar Chase goes 6 for 10 for 159 yards and a touch. Right. Just wiling out, doing exactly what he did in college. Him the, and Burrow. The Packers lose uh, Alexander there for a little while, who's been outstanding. So I would have been interested to see that matchup between those two. They, they probably would have been on each other and probably would have been fun. Maybe that stat line isn't quite what it is right there, uh, but maybe it is. Um, Joey B seems locked in on... On some on some Jamar, you got you got Higgins back this game, and they just they got three good choices there. But Jamar Chase has been as advertised and an absolute yeah. stud so far. And 
you know, at some point here soon, we'll do a, a little bit of a rookie redraft through the first couple rounds. I'll be interested to see where uh, the panel lies on panel. if uh, maybe Jamar Chase has jumped everybody. But then, you know, then you see the next guy in line finally doing it with more than just receptions, getting 23 carries, Najee Harris. Najee. Uh, that Steelers offensive line that was super young goes comes home, plays a good Denver team, and that offensive line actually plays like a unit and seem like they maybe have taken a small step forward, which, you know, at the end of last year, this was a terrible unit, and everybody was like, oh, this is a terrible unit, and they kind of revamped it here a little bit, and, and I got some young guys on throughout most of that line, and, and maybe we just saw a little something there uh, with that offensive line getting better. 23 for 122, a touch, and then two for five on the receptions and, and uh, 20 yards. So low on the receiving end of what Najee's Compared been doing because they've just been absolutely yeah. peppering him in the uh, passing that's, game that's here. But to see him grind that game out with 23 yards, 100 or 23 attempts for 122 yards behind that line against a good Denver defense um, was, was very game. encouraging. He looked great. He looked like everything you wanted to see from Najee. So every time that you're thinking, damn, that Jamar Chase looks so damn good and maybe the Steelers offense isn't good. Jamar Najee Harris is every week figuring out week after week how to be a great fantasy asset for your team, which, you know, is why you drafted him one overall. It's everything you expected. It's what you expected and maybe more. Right. Well, I mean, th th this is what you expected, and then those weeks before, that was the more. I think, like the reception, just the I mean, ridiculous. I knew he was a good catcher, not that he, yeah, ball, not that he but... wasn't a good receiving back, I mean, but like that usage was crazy. But it's great that he's been that Najee's been finding week after week ways to just be great in your fantasy lineup. So, all right, give it, you know, just gives you a nice feeling. You know, if they can't run the ball, that that the options there for him to, to still be very effective in the pass game and they'll use him. It's like he can't um, lose in your lineup. At least so far he hasn't been able to. Whew. For a rookie, which rookie running backs, easier position to come into play, but mm. it's a good position. You know, they, they like to feed one guy, and he's a guy that can eat everything on his plate. He's finishing everything on that plate. I've been liking that that you've seen at least seen a little Bellage and, and Snell in there to just give my man a fucking breather here. Like, let my man live. <laughs> let him breathe. Yeah. yeah. For real. All right. One more guy before we take it to the MVR. And this guy could have been the MVR, but I think we just want to have a little dance party here for the MVR. So let's, let's do one more guy. Kyle Pitts could have easily been the most valuable rookie this week. Kyle. He's finally, you know, he's been getting you some points in your fantasy lineup, or maybe you've been sitting him, maybe you've been a little down. I said last week, just have some patience. He's a rookie tight end. It'll be okay. Um, I've been playing him every week in one of my leagues, and, he, you know, he's been doing okay, not quite getting around 8 to 10 points. Um, I just don't have any better options, and, and I trade for him. And when you do, when you draft a guy high in Dynasty, sometimes you just have to play him. But, man, did it pay off. In week five, he goes to London, gets his first touchdown, hit them boys with the T, mm -hmm. with the T. Like, oh, I'm just loving everything I can see from Kyle Pitts. I mean, nine for 10, caught nine of 10 balls, 119 yards, his first touchdown. He's crushing slant routes from the slot. He's crushing the middle of the field, stretching the seam. If Matt Ryan would have thrown a better ball on that one deep seam route, that would have been another touchdown. Um you're seeing the red zone dominance that he portrayed in college where he could not be stopped, had a ridiculous one-handed catch. Like, he just, the whole kit and caboodle gave it to you all. Gave it to, gave you everything you wanted in this game, put up 20-something fantasy points, and you were just like, if you are watching that game, which at 9.30, I assume you would be, just look like, damn, I'm going to win this week with Pitts in my tight end spot. Not so fast. We kicked somebody's ass who had Pitts against us in their tight end spot. I actually so. lost that week. Uh, mm. with Pitts getting that many points, mm. but mm. yeah. Worked backwards on you. It wasn't Pitts' bummer. fault. It wasn't Pitts' fault. I was feeling great after 930. <laughs> Pitts was out there looking like a wide receiver on the field and just getting fed, and I think, you know. No Ridley probably helped. No Ridley probably helps a little bit, but I think, you know, you just saw a nice little step forward for Kyle Pitts, so uh, you got to be excited about that. Absolutely. All right. Shall we take it to the most valuable rookie? I don't know. Have a little dance party, the young Joker. 
<laughs> you probably don't know who we're talking about. <laughs> I don't That's know. That's his rap name. He is. I would let him to be. I, I don't know. I guess he can be the MVR because he would be considered an outlier. Ah. Um, but usually, you know, we won't let those guys in the club. We just outliers keep those guys. No, just like guys who aren't supposed to be good. Ah. Um, but then when they are good, you get the out of saying that they're an outlier. Well, he's just an outlier. Right. Well, here at the oh. FF Dynasty. Ka, ka, ka Darius. <laughs> <laughs> Little Tony. Let's Little Toonchi. Fucking go. Yeah. Fucking phenomenal. Oh man, Canary! Like, go ahead. I'm gonna do like Casey's doing at his house and raise the roof. Boom! <laughs> oh yeah. How was the last it. time someone raised the roof? Mm, long time. It's probably gonna, we're probably gonna lose a subby for that. Whatever. Damn it! Canarius Tony is the reason why I can't ever fully just be like, yeah, analytics are the be all end all. However you want to state it. I'm just going to quit watching football and rely on analytics. Right. Never going to do that because a guy's like fucking Kadarius motherfucking Tony. And again, the out then will be is that that he's an outlier. He's an outlier. Whatever. But the fact that if you just, regardless of what happened all those other years at Florida, whatever Florida was doing, whatever the rhyme or reason it was, if you just went back and watched this year of Florida of Kadarius Tony playing football, you would have seen exactly what you saw on the field the last two weeks with Kadarius Tony, he just moves differently. And yeah, okay, sometimes that doesn't quite transfer to the next level, but then now you've seen it on the field and you've seen how he moves and you see that the this corner that everybody has been wanting to brand as one of the new shutdown corners and as a, a home run hit for the Dallas Cowboys, which he is and which we have said on this show, but he cooked him a couple times. Yeah, he did. He just w- looks like he is just on a whole nother level than other people moving around and operating on that field. I don't know if you said any of this last week. I'm sure you did, um, but... Well, you didn't listen to my show? I did not. I don't listen to fantasy podcasts. Um, <laughs> That's why we started this way. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect you to listen to it. And I did say most of this, you know, like he just, he does move different. And and he moved different in college, and that was evident. And that's not to say, like you said, that doesn't mean he's going to be good in the NFL, okay? But then a team goes and drafts him in the first round, which everybody hated that. Well, they hate Gettleman. Exactly. Well, that's what I was going to say. They fucking hate all that. Everything just went right along with anti Kadarius Tony. Well, Gettleman drafted him. Huh? What a Gettleman-like pick that Gettleman's going to Gettleman. <laughs> God, that's one of the more douchebags yeah, things like, you could say. Fuck, man. So, but, but I mean, so, so he moves well. You like what you see. He gets draft, high draft capital. They want to hate on Gettleman, but they love the fucking draft capital. Draft capital. <laughs> right? Got to have draft capital. So you like seeing that. Now, it was muddy over there. And you don't know if he seems a little immature, right? Right. He seems a little immature. Got in trouble in college. Had some fuck ups here and there. And we stated really that. Really wants to have a rap career, which I'm not necessarily knocking, but it didn't work out for Lev Bell. So we have not a great track record. It's working out for Cole Beasley, but not Is for Lev though? Bell. Is it? Well, not last week, but <laughs> overall. Uh, we, we've said this in the rookie breakdown. We've said it before. Uh, it, the only thing that's going to keep him from being a superstar is himself. If he can mentally get over the immaturity and the stupid shit that bad tweets that he does, you know, again, has a great game, gets a little provoked in this. It wasn't necessarily his fault. I'm not saying if I was in his position, I wouldn't have tried to retaliate too. It's an emotional game. You're getting fired up. I wouldn't have punched somebody with a closed fist, but I would have grabbed, I probably would have grabbed that motherfucker and we would have been on the ground. Right. Because, Especially if I'm in the heat of the moment like that. Maybe he missed on purpose to save his the fracturing of his hand. But I mean, he got he got shoved and 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 messed around with it. It's they always, blew the whistle. The play was dead, right. and that motherfucker threw him to the ground. Right. They were they were tackling the shit out of him because they were so mad. All the dude, he was cooking every single wide yeah. receiver they or DB they had. Even on 50-50s, he was still winning those balls. And then when he caught it. Like that one play where he he came back to the ball, like you said, there was like three guys around him, and he just took one step and just jolted right. past everyone. He everybody. knew where he was going before he caught the ball, which sometimes could be, you know, devastating to the player. But he turned around and cut up between three guys, one of which was Diggs, 
and just and it was just like they all look like they were just playing in molasses and he was just on a different level like right. he just hit some cheat code that just went burp burp bap and right. i'm out of here right he, see ya he got unlimited lives on contra that's for sure like and, and on that one play where he burned well he burned Diggs a couple times but the the big gainer that he had double, like kind of he beat like, him off the that. line of scrimmage and then Diggs was like trailing him and he's like trying to like he's like they got Aikman him on that like, kind of like double ma- move. Well, right, Aikman was like Diggs was playing the the deep cross, and I don't know exactly what fucking route that was. They make up some crazy shit in the NFL, but he fakes the double cross and then busts it outside after he had already cooked him off the line of scrimmage. Like he didn't get any hands on him, and and he couldn't. He was cooked off the line of scrimmage, and then he right, that's cut that, outside, and it was just that's the burned. post. That's like the post corner where you take that step in and then and bust it back out. But, but it was making every Dallas Cowboys DB look silly, both pre and after the catch. And so them boys were mad. And then when they were get, they were tackling the shit out of him when they finally could wrangle him after right. ridiculous amounts of yak. Right. He just looks untackable. Now you look at his A dot, it is slightly better than Amon Ross St. Brown. So he must be bad too, then, right? right? Are we fucking judging everybody on a goddamn A dot? Apparently. We get rid of a fucking A dot? If I never hear average depth of distance target ever again, <laughs> it'll be too fucking soon. The fuck out of my face with an A dot. Because if A dot was the end all be all, Tony wouldn't be any good. But if you look at 10 for fucking 13 for 189 yards, that's fucking good. Tony looks fucking fantastic. The outlier, however you want to chop it up. I mean, He's again. He's an outlier. Well, we don't, we're not, that's not good enough for me. That's not good enough no. for he, us here at the FF Dynasty. We're looking for the outliers. I'm about to change our fucking name to the, the, the outliers. Right. And, and again, I'm not, not anti-analytics by any means. I want the whole story. I want to, I want to hear all about it. I want to hear the percentages. But it's also a must for reasons like this to go back and watch and, and you can mimic and mock eyeballs, but like you need to at least after you did all that analytical research or whatever it is that you call it, go lay eyeballs to see if those things match up. You need to be putting those two things together to say, all right, this guy's obviously freakishly athletic, but the breakout age and the dominator rating and yada, yada, yada isn't any good. Why, why not? But let, let's go, 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 get, go see him, go look at him, go watch some games um, Florida wasn't a prolific offense for a long time. And then Kyle terrible. Trask came in there and you know, it's a, it's a whole different deal. And, and Pitts and Tony, Tony finally gets rolling. And again, we've said it a million times. The only thing that's going to keep this man from being awesome is himself. And now we did cool a little bit in the off season here because he was fucking up already Injured in the off season, making so, bad tweets, but to his you know, credit, yeah, he came back and apologized said he can't let that, that, get to him and he can't lose his cool and, and i mean that was fantastic right instead of like going at the other guy well he did you know doesn't like, want to put his team in that position point the other right. finger but like he he took it on himself so i gotta give him some kudos for that i'm not mad at him for throwing that punch like whatever i'm he not really mad at him for throwing that over. punch i just need him to just fucking be just just don't do dumb shit and, yeah. and be focused on, on the task at hand here i don't give a fuck what else you do you just need to just not do dumb shit realize the opportunity that you have in front of you right. work hard have a good time uh, right, but just right. you know joe judge was hot yeah he was hot he said that was fucking embarrassing get to the fucking locker room but i fucking love what i'm seeing from Kadarius tony love i think it. the cat's fucking out of the bag at this point for anybody who's seen what's going on and there's some egg on some faces, some people already. Let's just, they're praying to God that Tony's mental fucks him up so that they don't have to explain why see, they were so see. out on Kadarius Tony. Right. Um, and they're not even using the mental thing as a negative. They don't even know that shit because they're not fucking looking into his past and looking at what he did in college, like other than the fucking stats that show up on some website that give you dominator and age breakout and whatever the fuck they put all their faith in. It's right. just like. Just watch him play, man. He moves different. He got drafted high. Someone else likes him too. Like he got the talent. He didn't cost very much. He got no, cheaper no, and cheaper. no. That's exactly what I was about to end this with. Was like he was habitually us stating that the bet is one of the best values of the draft right now. Just get Kadarius Tony and throw him on the bottom of the roster because if he pans out, that's going to be a smash in the second round. And he looks like he's fucking smashing right now. Can't you can't fucking not love it? it and, and if Daniel Jones has, when he's had time in the last couple of weeks, hasn't looked like an absolute fucking train wreck. And if you can just 
kind of he knows when to run and knows when to move around and make that defense butthole get a little tighter. Everything's going to get a whole lot easier. Just needs to be protected a little bit better. And when he is, he's just fine. And Kadarius Tony, seemingly like he took a couple shots downfield early to 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 Tony, and that has been the knock on Daniel oh, Jones. Is, hasn't been a good hasn't been a good down the field and testing down the field and the accuracy down the field haven't been great. And you know, so and then when Daniel Jones was getting carted off the field, Tony ran all the way to the tunnel and dapped him up. And, you know, so some good positive things out of Tony uh, on the field, and you know, some tweet wise is just. Be, be consistent off the field for me, Bo. Be consistent off the field. That's all. That's what. That's all we're asking. And there's a whole nother level of having to deal with off the field when you start, when 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 a star is born is getting labeled on you, and now you 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 becoming like this next. Especially when you're in New York, right? So can he handle that? You know, can he can he take on the magnitude of being a star wide receiver in the NFL in a in a high market? You know, a, one of the top markets, even though the NFC East fucking sucks, they get all the play on all the radio and they're always on TV. And it just it doesn't matter if they're winning or losing. Odell 2.0 oh? storyline. I mean, fuck. Yeah, it was like, damn, the white Giants know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> Gettleman's going to Gettleman. Bye. All right. Kadarius Tony, baby. K -k Kadarius. Right. Let's get the funk out of here. Appreciate you guys for joining us. Be sure to thrive. Hit that promo code at the FFD. Get you a little uh, match bonus. Have fun this weekend thriving. Yep. They'll it's, match it's, you up to 100 bucks, free money. Yeah, it's really a good time. Get a little player prop action in and uh, help your boys out throwing that promo code. Give me a subby, a scribey. Hit me with a comment if you're watching on the tubes. If you're listening on the podcast, please. Be so kind of you to hit us with a five-star review on the iTunes or your platform of choice. We're everywhere. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you next week. Peace.